antiquity unveil the most marvelous revelations of the 19th century concerning the origin of Christianity by Jonathan Manning Roberts. And we are in the second part of Zoroaster, Zarathustra, or Zerdusht. More probably, it only indicates the notion of chief, senior, high priest, and was a common designation of a spiritual guide and head of a district or province. Indeed, the founder of Zoroastrianism is hardly ever mentioned without his family name, Vis Spitama. He seems to have been born in Bactria, the term he applied to himself. The terms he applied to himself were either mantran, i.e., a reciter of mantras, a messenger sent by Ahura Mazda, a speaker, one who listens to the voice of oracles given by the spirits of nature, one who receives the sacred words from Ahura Mazda through the flames. Well, it doesn't have to be through the flames, but whatever. Um, is physically present when the revelation or inspiration comes, right? His life is completely shrouded in darkness. As to exactly when he was, um, Ush Ustra is a, is a camel, so Zarat Golden. Um, also, Zarath um, also refers to this ruddiness, this... Uh, the, in, in Afghanistan, there's these... I thought I'd never say this about camels. But there's these really cute red camels that are semi-nomadic, and I, I don't remember. They're in this one valley, but that could have been the camels he's had. He could have also had uh, yellow camels. Um, so it could have been a title about him, or it's, you know, we're a family who can afford camels, so uh, here's, you know, our son's going to be the golden camel. Um His life is completely, but calling him Zara, Zarat would be the term. Zarath implies possibly it's an older language than the Avestan, right? Um, and anyways, I've rambled. His life is completely shrouded in darkness. Both the Greek and Roman and most of the Zend accounts about his life and works are legendary and utterly unhistorical. In the latter, he is, to a great extent, represented not as a historical, but as a dogmatical personality, vested with superhuman, or rather divine powers, standing next to God, above archangels themselves. Well, Islam has a teaching about that, too. And this teaching in Islam is that the believer, the believer is greater than the light beings, because the believer has chosen to believe and do the right things. Chosen. The other things don't have a choice. His temptations by the devil, whose empire is threatened by him, form the subject of many traditional reports and legends. He is represented as the abyss of all wisdom and truth, and the master of the whole creation. We worship, so runs out of the prayers in the Fravardin Yasht, the rule and the guardian angel of Zarathustra Spitama, who of course wouldn't have wanted angels worship, much less the ones over him, um, we remember, we think about, is a translation of the word that's often translated as worship. So without referring to the Avestan, that's what I'm going to assume is the case here. The rule and guardian angel of, angel of Zarathustra Spitama, who first thought good thoughts, who first spoke good words, who first performed good actions, who was the first priest the first warrior, the first cultivator of the soil, the first prophet, the first who was inspired, the first who ha has given to mankind nature and reality and word and hearing of word and wealth and all good things created by Mazda, which embellish reality, who first caused the wheel to turn among gods and men, 
who first praised the purity of the living creation and destroyed idolatry, who confessed the Zarathustrian belief, Mazda Yasnehe Zarathustrahe. All praise, all songs, all celebrations are for God, and this is our way, and Zarathustra is an example of the way, basically. Belief in Ahura Mazda, the religion of the living God against the devils, and more. Oh, oh, those dots mean this is a, a bri uh, this is abridged content, doesn't it? Well, the stars. Through whom the whole and revealed word was heard, which is the life and the guidance of the world. Again, abridged content. Through his knowledge and speech, the waters and trees become desirous of growing. Through his knowledge and speech, all things created by the Holy Spirit are uttering words of happiness. As will be shown hereafter, it will be apparent that the most eloquent and comprehensive prayer is addressed to a dual being, one part of whom is but the allegorical personification of the acting forces in nature, and the other part, some inspired seer, sage, prophet, or medium, who embodied the knowledge of the operation of the natural forces in written speech. Nothing more sublimely grand, nothing more sublimely grand and comprehensive has ever been said with such beauty and perfect adaptation of words, thoughts, in relation to any being, mythical or real or both. In the old Yasna, see Zendavesta alone, he appears like a living reality, a man acting a great and prominent part, both in the history of his country and that of mankind. His father's name seems to have been Purush Aspa, and that of his daughter, the only one mentioned of his children, Porus Chistra, very obscure, however, remains. Even by this account, the time when he lived, the dates generally given are as follows. Tsranas, oh, Kanthus of, of Lydia, Vludia, places him about 600 years before the Trojan War. That's more reasonable than putting him at the later date. Um, Aristotle and Eudacus place him 6,000 years before Plato. Others, again, 5,000 years before the Trojan War. Berosasus, a Babylonian historian, makes him a Babylonian king and the founder of a dynasty which reigned 2200 and 2,000 years BCE over Babylon. That, that could have been the origin of the Avestan text, a revival of that period. There is more information, but uh, we're going th through quickly here. The Parsis place him at the date of Hystas Pes, Darius' father, whom they identify with the king mentioned in the Shah Nama, from whom, however, Hystas Pes is totally distinct. This account would place him about 5500 BCE. Actually, the Parsis don't quite place him there. Of course, there's divisions among the Parsis, so I've, I don't remember in the Parsi text where he's so early that he'd be after the Avestan text. Or why he, the Avestan text would be in such a... Um, Again, we may be talking about multiple people when we say, oh, Zarathustra, um, maybe there's a prophet, and then there's a vision, and then a revision, and then other revisions, and who knows, there may be further revisions and revivals of what remnants there are. 55, oh, 550 BCE. There is scarcely a doubt that he must be considered to belong to a much earlier age, not later than 1000 BCE. Possibly he was a contemporary of Moses, why was he not probably Moses himself? It is almost certain that Zarathustra was one of the Sosh Yantas, our fire priest, with whom the religious reform which he carried out boldly first arose. 
Now remember the Magian. Uh, it's apparent that there was a Magian um, revival of our passing on of his teachings. And uh, he, what seems to remain, kind of shows that he was not quite of that period or inclination. When he first arose. These were probably at first identical with the Vedic Atharvans. Atar, what, what's what's the name of the Atar or something? Because fire, uh, fire is Atar. Um, as indeed Zoroastrianism is merely an advanced stage of Brahmanism. The former creed, that of Ahura, by way of eminence, transformed after the outbreak of the schism, the good beings of the latter into devils or devas. The purely Brahmanic Indra, Sharva, Nasatya, etc., unless it promoted them into saints and angels, Yagatas. The conflict that led to the schism between the Iranians and those Aryan tribes which emigrated into Hindustan proper, and whose leaders became afterwards founders of Brahmanism, sprung from many social, political, and religious causes. So, about 8,000 years ago or so was... Well, actually, we can trace it a little further back. As early as possible, we can say this for multiple reasons. But, look at, you know, about 6,000, uh, you know, 6,000 BCE... These five tribes, the four Hindus and the one for the Persian, were basically the same culture. They weren't really divided at that point. The former creed, that of the Hur by way of eminence. Way of eminence transformed after the outbreak by the schism of the good beings of the latter into devils or devas. Davas. Devas refer to different beings because we're different languages, but we had, you know, um, so when we play etymology, don't say that, oh, the the Davas are the Devas. They're not. The, uh, the Asuras are the Davas, and the Ahuras are the... The Ahuras are the Devas, and the Asuras are the Davas. Um... Anyways, you know, there's a lot of examples we can bring forth at the table here. Um, the good beings of the latter into devils or devas. Uh, e example, the purely Brahmanic Indra, Sharva, Nasatya, etc. Unless it promoted them into saints or angels, Yagatas, Yazatas. The conflicts that led to the schism between the Iranians and those Aryan tribes which immigrated into Hindustan proper and whose leaders became afterwards founders of Brahmanism, sprung from the many social, political, and religious clauses, uh, causes. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I repeated things. Um, the Aryans seem to have originally led a nomad life until some of them reaching into the course of their migration lands fit for permanent settlements settled down as agriculturalists, factory and the parts between the Oxus and Jaxartes seem to have attracted the most. The Iranians became gradually estranged from the brother tribes who adhered to the, their ancient nomad life, and by degrees the Willem affection, having turned into hatred, considered those peaceful settlements a fit prey for their depredations and inroads. The hatred thus nourished by former degrees included all and everything belonging to those devastators, even their religion, originally identical with that of the settlers. The Deva religion became in their eyes the source of all evil. Molded into a new form, styled the Ahura religion, old elements which were much more changed than was the cause when Judaism became Christianity. Was it? Monotheism into polytheism? Um, reliance on your own deeds, vicarious sacrifice, um, changing philosophy, um, time-tried wise. Uh, 
generation, uh, it's, it's mainly a linguistic thing, and from one culture to another, they may be referring to the same thing, but it sounds like they've, someone else made enemies of each other. The people who speak the language just have to make use of the language, right? Generation after generation, further added and took away until Zarathustra, with the energy and the clear eye that belonged to exalted leaders and founders of religions, remember he would have hated to be considered a, follower, a founder of a religion, cursed to be the founders of religions, gave to that which had been originally a mere reaction and spite against the primitive Brahmanic faith, a new and independent life, and forever fixed its dogmas, not a few of which have sprung from his own brains, all of which would be very good reasoning if the spirit of Zarathustra was not now living and had not returned to state that his religion in relation to Ahurmuz, to Ormuzd, and Mithra was the impartation of spirits through him as an inspired medium. It is, as we said in the article on the Zend Avesta, chiefly from the Gathas, and Zarathustra's real theology, unmutilated by latter changes, can be learned. His leading idea was monotheism, whatever may have caused the establishment of the dualism of gods, the good and the evil in the Persian religion, a dualism so clearly marked at the time of Isaiah that he found it necessary to protest emphatically against it. It was not Zarathustra who proclaimed it. His dualism is of a totally different nature. It was merely the principle of his speculative philosophy, a supposition of two principal causes of the real and intellectual world. His moral philosophy, on the other hand, moved in a triad. Thought, word, and deed. There is no complete system of Zoroastrian philosophy to be found in the Zend Avesta, any more than there is a developed Platonic system laid down explicitly in the Platonic writings. But from what is to be gathered in the documents referred to, it cannot be doubted that Zarathustra was a deep and great thinker, far above his contemporaries, and even many of the most enlightened men of subsequent ages. And every true prophet would do that. They, would, they wouldn't be just a product of their time. They would do something, something more. If proof were needed for the high appreciation in which he was held in antiquity, and might be found in the circumstance that even the Greeks and Romans, not particularly given to overrating foreign learning and wisdom, held him in the very highest estimation, as may be seen by their reiterated praises of the wisdom of him, whose name they scarcely knew how to pronounce. With regard, then, to the first point, his monotheism it suffices to mention that while the fire priest before him, the Shoshantas, I think they're mixing the word for the world savior, uh, Shoshant, uh, you know, the prophet of the age, I mean, the lasting, you know, for centuries, you know, that sort of thing. Um, well, the, the message lasting for centuries. That could be what the dates are in the Bible, is that Another prophet wasn't needed because it was preserved enough for this many years, and then another prophet came and um, worshipped a plurality of good spirits called Ahuras, so they weren't monotheists. But you can say the different names of God without thinking of different gods, can't you? As opposed to the Indian Devas, he reduced this plurality to a unity. Every, every prophet of God was accused of the same thing, it seems like, if there was enough information about him. Oh, he's making the gods one. Um, this one supreme being he called Ahura Mazda'au. That Ahura, that is Mazda'au, are the creator of the universe. Ahura Mazda. Oh, Aura Mazda of the cuneiform inscriptions of the Achaemenidian kings, the Ahurmazd of the Sasanian times, and the Hormazd or Ormazd of the modern Parsis. 
Because see, so there was the Magian, possibly personified by the um, Avestan revival. The Achaemenian, definitely, um, they wanted to get things down, sort of write their Bibles. The 21 Nasks, of which we only have a not purely transmitted form of one. Um, the Sassanian, of course, there, there was revival under them, and then the Parsis. Um, and it's time to step away from this uh, This superior god is by Zarathustra, you know, the only one, according to El Monotheist, conceived to be the creator of the earthly and spiritual life, the lord of the whole universe, at whose hands are all the creatures. The following extract from the Gatha, Ushtaveta Gatha, will leave no doubt on that much contested point. Blessed is he, blessed are all the men to whom the living wise God of his own command should grant those two everlasting, you know, immortality and wholesomeness. I believe thee, O God. Oh, uh, there's missing words here. Um, I believe thee, O God to be the best thing of all, the source of light for the world. Everybody shall choose thee as the source of light, thee, the holiest spirit Mazda. Thou createst all good things by means of the power of thy good mind at any time, and has promised us who believe in thee a long life. I believe thee to be powerful, holy God Mazda, for thou givest with thy hand filled with the helps good to the pious man as well as to the impious by the means of the warmth and of the fire strengthening of good things from this reason the vigor of the good mind has fallen to my lot who was in the beginning the father and creator of truth who showed the beginning and the Father and Creator of Truth, who showed the sun and the stars their way, who caused the moon to increase and wane, if not thou, who is holding the earth and the skies above it, who made the waters and trees of the field, who is in the winds and in the storms that they so quickly run, who is the creator of good-minded beings, thou wise, who made the lights of good effect and the darkness, who made the sleep of the good effect and the activity, who made the morning, noon, and night, Ahura Mazda is thus to Zarathustra, the light and the source of light, in other words, the sun. Oh, in other words, the sun. He is wisdom and intellect. He possesses all good things, temporal and spiritual, among them the good mind, immortality, wholesome, the best truth, devotion, piety, and abundance of all earthly good. All these gifts he grants to the pious man, who is pure in thought, word, and deed. He rewards the good and punishes the wicked. And all that is created, good or evil, fortune or misfortune, is his work alone. We spoke of Zarathustra's philosophical dualism. Oh, is this... Is this another... Um, another quote from something. Maybe it's the, another seance. Um, we spoke of Zarathustra's philosophical dualism and of its having been confounded with the theological dualism, which is certainly very far from being. Nothing was further from Zarathustra's mind than to assume anything but one supreme being, one and indivisible, but that everlasting problem of all thinking minds viz the original the origin of evil and its incompatibility with God's goodness, holiness, and justice, he attempted to solve by assuming two primeval causes which though different were united and produced the world of material things as well as that of the spirit. 
the one who produced the reality, Gaya, is called Bahumana, Bahumana, the good mind, the other through whom the non-reality, Ajyete, originated, is the Akam Mano, the not mind. To the first belong all good, true, and perfect things. To the second, all that is delusive, bad, wicked. These two aboriginal moving causes of the universe are called twins. They are spread everywhere, in God as in men. When united in the Hura Mazda, they are called Ktento Menus and Angro Menus, i.e. white or holy. The dark spirits, oh, and dark spirits. It is only in latter writings that these two are supposed to be opposed to each other, not within Ahura Mazda, but without the stand in fact in relation of God and the devil to each other. Now, Angromania uh, was considered separate, but the idea of God creating light and darkness came before the idea of splitting the two up. The inscription of Darius, no but one God, without any adversary whatever. But while the one side within him produced all that was bright and shining, and all that is good and useful in nature, the other side produced all that is dark and apparently noxious. But God does not create evil. Evil is a choice made with the created. Right? Both are as inseparable as night and day. Although opposed to each other, are indispensable for preservation of creation. The bright spirit appears in the blazing flame. The presence of the dark is marked by the wood converted into charcoal. The one has created the light of the day, the other the darkness of night. The former awakens men to their duty, the other lulls them to sleep. Life is produced by the one and extinguished by the other, who also by releasing the soil, uh, releasing the soul from the fetters of the body enables her to go up to immortality and everlasting life. We have said already that the original monotheism of Zarathustra did not last long. False interpretations, misunderstandings, changes, and corruptions crept in, and dualism was established in theology. Also, ritual drug use. But other groups had long had that sort of thing going on. Marijuana, ephedra, and opium in particular. The two principles, then, for the first time, became two powers, hostile to each other, each ruling over a realm of his own, and constantly endeavoring to overthrow the other. This doctrine, which appears first fully developed in the Vendadad, once accepted by some of the most influential leaders, it soon followed that, like terrestrial rulers, each of the two powers must have a council and a court of his own. The number and counselors was six, each having to rule over some special provinces of creation. But Ahura Mazda, who at first merely presided over this council, came gradually to be included in their number, as we then read of seven instead of the usual six Amesha Spentas, or immortal saints. These six supreme counselors have also found their way into the Jewish tradition embodied in the Talmud, are both by etymology and the sense of the passages in which they figure distinctly seen to be but abstract nouns or ideas representing the gifts which God grants to all those who worship with a pure heart, who speak with the truth, and perform good actions. The first of these angels or principles, Bahumana, Baha Mana, is the vital faculty in all living beings. is the vital faculty in all living beings of the good creation. He is the son of Ahura Mazda. You know, a concept. Nobody thought that Ahura Mazda literally gave birth to him. And penetrates the whole living good crea creation. By him are wrought all good deeds and words of men. The second, Ardib Behesht, represents the blazing flame of fire. 
the light and luminaries and brightness and splendor of any and every kind. He represents as the light, the all-pervading, all-penetrating Ahura Mazda's omnipresence. So kind of like the Hari. He's the preserver of the vitality of all life and all that is good. He thus represents providence. The third presides over metals and is the giver of wealth. His name is Sharavar, which means possession, wealth. The fourth, Isaradharmat, devotion, represents the earth. It is a symbol of the pious and obedient heart of the true Ahura Mazda worshiper who serves God with his body and soul. The two last, Kordad and Amerdat, preside over vegetation and produce all kinds and produce all kinds of fruit. But apart from the celestial council stands Sraasha Serosh uh, Serost, the angel the archangel, vested with very high powers. He alone seems to have been considered a personality. He stands between God and men, the great teacher of the prophet himself. So sort of like a Gabriel figure. Here, dear reader, you have the great spirit control who is at the head of the band of spirits who used and inspired the great and immortal Persian medium. And, but not medium in the sense of the medium that they're hiring to are promoting to deliver some of these messages. As he, Zarathustra, has led and controlled the spirit forces that have used the organism of the condem, the contemned and persecuted medium, of the condemned and persecuted medium, he shows the way to heaven and pronounces judgment upon human actions after death. He is in the Yasna, styled the sincere, the beautiful, the victorious, who protects our territories, the true, the master of truth, for his splendor and beauty, for his power and victory. He is to be worshipped and invoked. Well, to worship the god, not the way-shower. He first sang the five gathas of Zarathustra Spitama. That is, he is the better, oh, he's the bearer and representative of the sacred tradition. So, sort of like a Khalifa figure. Including the sacrificial rites and prayers. He is the protector of all creation, for he slays the demon of destruction who prevents the growth of nature and murders its life. 